the presidents, some of the most respected leaders with pages and pages of qualifications that I really don't have right now to show you, so just imagine a bunch of paper with words scribbled onto it. They are, however, intelligent, sensible, courageous, respectful, poised, charming, intellectual, coherent, cohesive, and professional with any deal of matter. Often, they are straightforward with their messages. However, there is one outlier that doesn't follow this, and that's Donald Trump, of course. He has a particular way of conveying his message, if any message at all, to his public. Whether it's factually true, bing, bing, bing. relevant, bing, 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 bing. appropriate, bing, 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 bing. and almost always none of the above, bing, boom. Trump will say it. Bing, 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 bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. I found it interesting how I began to understand the meta of political language as Trump reigned office. He is such a jarring contrast to all of the past presidents that many feel the need to take him as example to show the startling difference of what is expected of a president. I have come up with this wild theory of why President Trump has been able to get away with a lot of the things that he's doing. Are you ready to hear it though? Okay good, because I'm about to say it. I believe that Donald Trump is secretly a genius at mind. I'm a very stable genius. And he has found the way to use our societal norm against us to execute his agenda with the people, despite all of the news outlets and big figures who time and time expose his devious work. But to show you that, I would have to break down a theory from H. Paul Grace and his four maxims. But let me explain you some basic theory. Cooperative principle. What's that? I'm sure we all communicate for the sake of being clearly understood to achieve a goal of some sort. Many of us don't like to be beaten around the bush because we simply don't have the time to be analyzing the sense of what someone is saying. Or at least I don't. So here are the four subcategories that Grace has set out. The four subcategories are manner, quality, quantity, and relation. Let's start with manner. Maxim number one, avoid obscurity of expression. Now I couldn't find any examples of this, but I think we all know why. So let's move on to maxim number two. Avoid ambiguity. She got to know the players. She got to know China, Russia, India. She knows everybody on a very first name basis and they like her. Maxim number three, be brief. When you were with the president of China, you're launching these military strikes. Uh, was that planned? How did that come about that it's happening right then? I was sitting at the table. We had finished dinner. We're now having dessert. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. So what happens is I said, we've just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq. Well, you Sorry. headed to Syria. Yes, heading toward Syria. And finally, maxim number four, be orderly. South Korea, remember they came over from South Korea, they stopped North Korea, South Korea, the Olympics. And it started with the Olympics. When Chairman Kim said, we want to go to the Olympics, I said, yeah, that's nice. It's a big difference from the dialogue we were having, right? Slight. It's like, they want to go to the Olympics. And the Olympics would have been a massive failure, and it turned out to be a massive success. They were not exactly selling tickets the minute that happened. And he said, would like to be part of the Olympics out of nowhere. The minute that happened, the Olympics became a fantastic success. It was a great Olympics. The next subcategory is quality. Maxim number one, do not say what you believe to be false. I never met Putin. I don't know who Putin is. God looked down and he said, we're not going to let it rain on your speech. By March, he had amassed four times as many lies as any president had in two terms. You look at what's happening last night in Sweden. Sweden! His politifact numbers were off the charts. Maxim number two, do not say that for which you lack adequate evidence. Response and recovery effort probably has never been seen for something like this. This is an island surrounded by water, big water, ocean water. The third subcategory is quantity. Maxim number one, make a contribution as informative as required. Thank you, everybody. You're going to see some very, very strong results very, very quickly. Thank you very much. Maxim number two, do not make your contributions more informative than is required. And when you see these thugs being thrown into the back of a paddy wagon, you just see them thrown in, rough. I said, please don't be too nice. 
Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, you know, the way you put their hand over. Like, don't hit their head and they've just killed somebody, don't hit their head. I said, you can take the hand away, okay? And the last subcategory is relation. The only maxim, be relevant. And of course, the struggle is real for Trump. But how are you going to deal with uh, President Vladimir Putin? Um, is he as your enemy or someone you can have dialogue with? Well, I think we'll be able to have great dialogue, I hope. Nobody's been tougher on Russia than I have. Strong energy, the United States. My opponent was into windmills. We're very strong on energy. Essentially now, energy independent. We're an exporter of energy. That is not a positive for Russia. We just passed a $700 billion military in dollars, the largest ever passed. We are going to have a military stronger than we've ever had before by far. That's not exactly a great thing for Russia. That's the way it is. The strongest military that we ever had. NATO was delinquent. They were not paying a lot of states, as we discussed. Since I came in, many, many billions of dollars now they're paying. Now, all of this should appear obviously pointless as we somehow subconsciously learned this as we grew up in the society. This kind of communication is proven to be effective and highly praised and respected. When someone doesn't comply with these maxims, we feel annoyed and almost develop a sense of disrespect for having our time wasted or intelligence questioned. So how has Trump gotten away with flouting all of these maxims? Well, get ready, because I'm about to tell you something that's going to blow your socks off with my incredible theory. But first, I must show you what ground Trump and everyone else is working with. As earlier mentioned before, the presence of Trump has really shaken up the people to become more analytical and confident with their judgments. Most uneducated or ill-informed people usually tune out of listening to politicians because it's filled with jargon that's incomprehensible, too long, boring, or doesn't address any of their immediate needs. Trump, however, has a literacy equivalent of some of his rural or poorly educated voters. Communication, therefore, is a breeze, while for many others, this has become comical. Serious news outlets, however, are scrambling to report as per usual with the unsophisticated content Trump provides, so they try their best to prove his inadequacy to be fit for president. But there's a problem. People with short attention span usually don't have the capacity to keep up with these news reporters or politicians because of how complex these ideas are. But as we have seen before, Trump cannot hold a coherent thought for longer than 7 seconds without being interrupted by another grandiose or irrelevant thought. So that's perfect. They listen to bits and pieces of information that are simple and short enough to understand. But let's just say though that they don't even listen for the message that Trump is really saying. Pay attention to his tone and you'll find that he holds himself high, mighty, and courageous, which is an easy idol for these people. He seems to narrate an I versus the world mentality. It's always live for me. You know, unfortunately, other guys say, make a speech, nobody cares. With me, everything's live. Uh, one mistake, and it's no good. No. Which holds true for many of those people, only he never fails to show them that he somehow has the power with his big hands and intelligence and has figured out the solution, so he's going to help them through it. If Trump is full of obscurity, the news reporters would want to expose Trump, which means their tone of Trump will always sound like a never-ending attack. So, orange man. Bad. Drum. Gloom. Bloom. Cramp. Orange man bad. Orange man bad. Orange man. Orange man. Orange man. Orange man. This would only push these people further from wanting to look at the facts. But whenever these news reporters discuss how Trump cannot be swayed from his momentum, no matter how often they expose him, their tone sounds like a defeat. And you know what that means. Yes, these people will register that tone as their victory. That's all they would need to believe that Trump was right about being invincible and that he can create results. However, there's another perspective that should be taken into consideration. 
is called the Overton Window. It's a concept in political science that says there's this window of ideas the public is willing to accept. Everything inside the window is normal and expected. Everything outside the window is radical, ridiculous, or unthinkable. And the theory goes that if you want to move the window, if you want to change what people think of as acceptable, you shouldn't start here. You should start here at the extreme because forcing people to consider an unthinkable idea, even if they reject it, makes all less radical ideas seem more acceptable by comparison. It shifts the window in that direction. That seems more probable, but that doesn't mean either are wrong. Somewhere in the world, my theories are somebody's reality. Either way, this is the tough situation for news reporters. But on the other hand, comedy shows have thrived with another target audience. We are operating in the space of news parody and uh, satire. When you talk about fake news, the biggest difference is it never tells you that it is fake news. We let you know from the beginning we are on Comedy Central. One thing we do maintain is factual accuracy, people, because I believe the best jokes are based in truth. And so when your truth foundation is solid, you will find that your jokes connect with more people. I believe that Donald Trump knows this. He knows all about this. Now that we understand what the circumstances are, let's see how Donald Trump prevails both sides. The answer is, he does it many, 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 many times. He even contradicts himself. I'm the only one on the stage that said we should not go into Iraq. Are you for invading Iraq? Yeah, I guess so. I'm very pro-choice. Do you believe in punishment for abortion? Yes or no? Is a principle. There has to be some form of punishment. With this amount of confusion and inconsistency, many are able to say that regardless of how Trump is flouting the maxims, he also admits to the other side of the argument. Others are hopeful and believe that for the amount of inconsistency Donald Trump brings, he surely cannot stand for one side for too long, so it's all right. A political candidate that has said very questionable things, I don't think that that's abnormal. I mean, we see that constantly in our media and our culture. I've reached a point where I've just desensitized myself to this kind of, the sleaze and all that kind of stuff. I mean, Every, every day there's something new about each candidate. Almost minute by minute, information about the campaign, they, they, they do absorb it, but in order for them to change their view, they need to see more than a tweet, more than one salacious revelation. Trump has essentially given all sides of the spectrum what they needed. Whether that's hope, a new spur of interest in politics, hope that his own failures will not allow him to succeed, or just for comedic relief. And he is doing great. Through constantly and repetitively flouting all of the maxims mentioned before, and by contradicting himself at all times, Trump has taken advantage of these fundamental cooperative principles that we abide by, so that he can cause mayhem successfully past all walks of life. Um.